Hello and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther and today I'm going to take you along on an experiment I'm trying um, that is a variety of winter sowing. So if you know me, I like to grow the majority of my seedlings for my spring and summer garden using a process called winter sowing. It's a way of growing seedlings outdoors and things like milk jugs. This is pom-pom dahlias I started um, on February 21 <laughs> instead of indoors under grow lights. Now. There is one dilemma I have with winter sowing in the way that I've done it before, which is that if you want to grow a lot of one variety or you want to grow six to eight types, uh, six to eight um, you know, or more seedlings of one tomato variety, let's say you want a beef, bunch of beef steak or purple Cherokee tomatoes or anything like that, well then winter sowing is using a milk jug is the perfect container because you can grow eight to 10 seedlings in one container. Now, if you want to grow two varieties and you don't wanna to have to use two containers, then you can like put a thing down the middle and do half and half one side. And there's extra tricks to that and I'm not getting into that today. But the challenge for me is I love variety. <laughs> I really do. And I have about two dozen varieties of tomatoes that I'm just not willing to not grow this year. <laughs> In fact, these are my must grow packet two and one packets. So I really want to grow a big variety. In fact, I have about probably close to 28 varieties of tomatoes that I want to grow this year. Some I'm going to grow using the traditional winter sowing method with the traditional containers. I think using, if you want security and the easiest way, use the traditional method. I know that works well and I can, I can vouch for it and I've heard others say it's the easiest. But I want the option to be able to grow 24 varieties of tomatoes and not end up with 300 extra seedlings that I'm not going to need in my garden, right? I just need one to two seedlings per variety for my garden. So what that means is I'm going to try something I've seen others try this year. And it's an experiment. This is Esther's Gardening Adventures, which is one giant experiment that I'm taking you along on. So I hope you'll bear with me. But I'm going to try using a tote container. So here I got, I got a pack of three from Costco for like $16. If you're going to do a tote, now again, this is me learning, having read others' experiences. So this is advice based on others, not on my own. But what I understand is that you want a container that's tall enough to give plenty of room for the seedlings to grow with whatever types of thing your vessel you're putting inside. You also want it to be clear on the outside. Ideally, the lid will also be clear and you're gonna need to put holes for drainage in the bottom of the tote as well as on the lid to allow the moisture in and for air circulation. In this case, I put holes all over this lid. Uh, and then in this case, so one of the sort of challenges of winter sowing using bigger containers like a tote is I've heard that the seedlings um, get dry out faster, that the, the, the individual um, pots or cups or whatever you put inside will dry out faster. And also that these totes get hot faster and they get cold faster. They get cold easier than your milk jug does. So I've done, I'm doing a couple things to deal with this. One, I am going to put a layer of potting mix on the bottom. And by doing that, a moistened potting mix on the bottom. And in doing so, hopefully that will help mean that if Let's say if the drips that come through the holes in this don't fall into my individual little pots, then ideally, these are some free pots I got from a friend last year. Uh, I have to take the tags off. But um, basically, if, if the water doesn't fall into these pots, I'm hoping that the moisture that's in the potting mix that has fallen from the lid will also help keep the air moist, help keep the soil moist, and maybe even the moisture can be wicked up through uh, the containers. But of course, I'm going to have to baby this a lot more. And that's why people don't recommend, the experts I know, don't recommend using a tote for your first year because you really kind of need to know how to manage it. And I think I'm probably going to have to babysit this tote a little bit more <laughs> than my others. But I really want to grow 24 tomato varieties and I don't want to have to use 24 milk jugs or 12 milk jugs if I were to divide two varieties per milk jug to do it. So, um or to have to pot up and give away a whole bunch of seedlings. Now I fully advocate for growing way more than you need and giving it away, but I just don't have the capacity to pot up that many tomato seedlings this year. It's just, I'm, I'm coming to reality here <laughs> on how much time I'm gonna have. I have two rental community gardens, plus my front yard, plus my backyard, and I've got a lot of other things going on in my life. So it's just kind of like, well, 
we're going to try this experiment. Now I'm still going to grow some of my favorite tomato varieties like Cherokee tomato in a milk jug. Some of the things that I can't live without so that if this utterly fails, I will still have tomato seedlings that I've grown from seed. <laughs> but let's get started on this. So I have, uh, these are not the cleaned ones, but I've basically taken these and I've taken the, the, uh, the labels off of them. And I washed them all, I uh, rinsed them down and washed them all with soap and water. And then I also, for the ones that I had, um, had had tomato seedlings in them before, just in case there was disease or fungus, I also wiped them down with rubbing alcohol. Um, and I found out that I can fit, oh, my neighbor's turning on music now. <laughs> Great, well, I'll be done in a second. I can fit 24 of these little things in here, I can fit 24 at a time. So that means I can grow 24 varieties of tomatoes. The other advice I've heard for these totes is to just do one type of thing. So like, I'm not gonna do tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants all in one tote. I'm just gonna do tomatoes in the tote. All right, so let's get started. I can't wait to see how this goes. So the goal here is I may still have to separate the seedlings, but I'm only gonna do like two seeds, maybe three seeds for older tomato varieties. And if you look, you can see the moisture already collecting on the potting mix at the bottom. And that's good. Um, that's a good sign to me that this will help keep the moisture levels up <laughs> for this. This potting mix is really nice. I've left it out all winter. I, I tend to buy a lot of my potting mix in the fall um, before, just so I don't have to go running out and get stuff. I usually get like four to five bags of, of potting mix, um, at least two to three bags of ocean forest um, to start off with. And usually three bags will get me through the season for most of my winter sowing. Um, and then I found this, this gardener's gold is actually just really, really good quality as well. And it's, so it's actually quite moist already, but I just wanna make sure that it's moist enough to get a good start, similar to you would do with winter sowing with a milk jug, following the similar similar process and principles. Boy, the wind is sure blowing today, isn't it? Got my, now I remember why I pull my hair back all the time. <laughs> the great thing about winter sowing is whatever your winter sowing window is, you basically don't have to worry about getting things done in any order. So while I would kind of be panicky if I was supposed to be starting tomatoes and peppers indoors under grow lights at this point, with winter sowing, I got plenty of time. I basically have till mid-April to get everything out, uh, everything winter sown. And so I'm doing this now just to kind of get it going. Um, oh, ah. Another thing to mention also is whatever tote container you get, you want to make sure it has at least four to six inches above wherever you're going to be putting your um, other containers in, right? So this still has plenty of space above it for the seedlings to grow straight and tall and happy. One of the things I like to do, move you over a tiny bit, is when in the evenings I'm sitting on the couch and watching something, I'll just go through and pick out what I'm going to grow um, and put labels in them. So, for example, this is a hybrid I'm doing, a stellar tomato hybrid from Pine Tree. And you can see inside, I already have the uh, label made up. So, I'm going to pull this one out. And you can see it's already dripping some water down here. Put this here. <laughs> Look how nice that fits. <laughs> Look how beautiful that fits there. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and then I'm going to put, let's see, one whole packet and you only get like 10 seeds. So I'm probably only going to do two seeds in this one. And I'm probably going to do two to three in all of them. Um, the hybrids just are so expensive. And of course you can't save seeds from hybrids because the whole idea is they won't stay true. That's three. Put one back. Ah, I put two back. Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to drop one there. Now, one of the reasons I'm growing more hybrids this year is because I want to have higher production. I also want disease resistance because I've really struggled with disease. This one is also a determinant tomato, which means it basically puts all of its tomatoes out at once. Push that down in a little bit. A tiny bit of top on top of it and I will spray them all. Ooh, I'm getting water over on my seed area. Let's see, what else we got in here that I wanna point out? This is one that I'm really excited to grow. It is persimmon tomatoes. These are full size, uh, 12 to 16 ounce, fru ounce fruits. 
Okay, there's that's actually four seeds. You know how seeds will get caught together? I'm just gonna do two seeds of this one though. The nice thing is if nothing sprouts, because it's not duct taped, I'll be able to just add another seed. One I got through the swap this year is these Napa Chardonnay tomatoes. Um, these are um, sweet yellow cherry tomatoes. And don't they, doesn't that look pretty? So I'm going to grow. And you know with a cherry tomato plant, you really only need one of uh, each type. You get plenty of cherry tomatoes from them. And this one looks like a pretty prolific producer. Come on. We'll do two again here. Right. Oh, I got a cover. And look, it's already, it's only been like a minute since I closed it and it's already fogging up. So I think that's a good sign. I think something I might do is I noticed there's some gaps here in, in terms of how sealed this container is. So I think tomorrow I'm going to take some tape and tape it so the sides are a little bit more um, tight on this. But for the moment, for overnight, it'll be fine. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please do so. And otherwise, I'll see you next time.